Hi, I'm Lucien. I take photos under the water and lots of other fun stuff besides. If that's something that interests you, then subscribe to this channel. In this video, I'm going to take you through all of the settings that I use on my camera every time I go out taking photos under the sea. It's something I've learned after years of trial and error, so hopefully it'll help you too. But first things first, there aren't hard and fast rules about settings to use when you're under the water, just as there aren't when you're above the water. There are so many ways that you can make an omelette. What matters is you get there in the end. How you get there really isn't that important. It's also worth pointing out that not all underwater camera cases will allow you to access all of the controls whilst you're under the water. So you're gonna to have to adapt how you set up your camera to account for this. So, why should you always have a start, the same starting point every time you go out taking photos under the sea? Great question. Because when you have the same starting point, you only ever need to tweak your settings rather than change and try to learn from scratch. And the more you do it, the more it becomes automatic until you get to the point where you, don't, you barely need to think about the settings that you're using, you just check it every now and again. And this is the way that you can improve on your composition, interacting with your model, or perfecting your dive technique, all those various other things that you need to do when you're swimming under the water, which are also so important. The less you need to worry about the settings on your camera, the better. That's why I always have the same starting point. All these guidelines I'm talking about today make the assumption that you're shooting from during the day, anytime from sunrise to sunset, and that you're shooting near the surface of the water, you're not going on a scuba dive. You need some other techniques when you're doing that. The camera I use is a Sony a7R 3 but what I'm talking about in this video are principles that you can apply to any camera system, uh, particularly any modern camera system that will have most of the same uh, ability to change the settings that I have on this camera. First up, mode. I always use AV, so, it, so I set the aperture and I allow the camera to set the shutter speed itself. But I always combine this with having a minimum shutter speed that I manually set. The reason I do that, because prior, prior to that I would use manual and I'd manually set the shutter speed and the aperture and have auto ISO uh, is because with this camera housing I can't get to the front dial on my camera it, it won't allow me to do that so I can't manually set both of those settings at the same time but I can achieve exactly the same result by doing exactly what I just said so that's what I mean by there are many ways to make an omelette you do what you need to do and what works best under the water aperture I normally start somewhere between 5.6 and 8 and that's because I'm shooting during the day and that's a fairly comfortable place to start. If it's getting on towards the end of the day I will open that out a little so getting towards 2.8 which is the widest that the lens I normally use goes and I will aim to have the ISO below a thousand. The other reason to have a slightly smaller aperture, so a larger number, is because it will help to accommodate any of the focusing issues. So you've got a, a larger depth of field, it'll help to accommodate any of the focusing issues that you might have when you're focusing under the water. Shutter speed. I set the minimum shutter speed that I will allow the camera to use at around 1 500th or even 1 1000th if it's a particularly bright day or I've got a particularly active subject. Then towards the end of the day, when the light is going, I will notch that down a little because what I want to do is I want to try and keep my ISO below a thousand. But I would like to have as fast a shutter speed as possible, mainly because, or pretty much exclusively because of the movement that I'm making as the photographer because I'm swimming around, I'm, I am making lots of movements and my subject, obviously I want to arrest the movement on my subject. So not only my subject, because people swim fast, fish swim even faster, so you find yourself chasing after them and they're moving super rapidly. So unless you want that movement in your shot, then you need a high shutter speed. 
The other thing is things like bubbles look great when they're really crisply defined by a fast shutter speed and they don't have any blur in them. Unless of course you're after a blur as an effect and then obviously you would set your shutter speed lower and change your aperture and your other settings to accommodate that. But generally speaking, just taking photos of people under the water around 1 500th or 1 1000th, that bird is really annoying. The last of the triumvirate of aperture shutter speed is ISO. I pretty much always have ISO set on auto and because I prefer to have the control over the aperture and the shutter speed, I, I prioritize those because of the reasons I've just said. But what I will always do is keep an eye on the ISO, an eye on the ISO, because I try to keep my ISO below a thousand. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes it creeps above there. That's more about personal preference. I just prefer a cleaner shot that doesn't have so much noise in it. So that's just something you need to decide for yourself. But just me personally, I tend to keep the ISO below it. I try to keep it below a thousand. So if the light's going and I see the ISO is starting to bump up a little, even though it's on auto, I'll keep an eye on it and I'll adjust my shutter speed and aperture accordingly. Focus. I set focus to AFC or continuous autofocus and I have it on zone, so pretty much the whole area. I tend not to use the spot and move it with the dial because under the water that's actually just a bit of a faff and it can distract and distract you from the main aim of getting photos of your subject. I've said in previous videos that are I think it's a good idea, particularly if you're just starting out, but even as a general rule of thumb, to try and fill your frame with your subject. So if you're doing that, then clearly zone focusing and continuous auto focus will work for you pretty much every time. The other thing that my camera does, and I know lots of cameras do these days, mirrorless cameras particularly, or almost exclusively have eye autofocus that also works under the water so make sure if you've got that you've got that engaged if your subject is a human I don't know if it works on fish actually with the animal IAF that would be interesting to try just thought of that one um, the other thing to bear in mind is that there's lots of movement under the water subject moving all the time and so that's why you want it on, you definitely want it on AFC so that you've got that continuous focus between each shot and as your subject moves around, your, it remains in focus. White balance, AWB, all the way, auto white balance. Uh, you will find some cameras which will have a underwater white balance setting. This is normally designated by a little fish and I've seen that on a few cameras, but to me it's a little bit of a waste of time because you should be shooting in RAW so you're getting all of that colour information and you're pretty much always going to be changing your white balance in post. So auto white balance, change it after. Next up RAW, always shoot in RAW regardless of whether you're above the water or below the water. You will need to edit your photos almost certainly once you come back on dry land and you're in front of your computer. So you need that additional information in order to change the settings, change the white balance, etc. So shoot in raw. No question. Frame rate. I always increase the frame rate on my camera. You want to take as many shots as possible under the water. So increase it up to high or very high, whatever it goes up to. Bear in mind that if you set it up to the highest, sometimes some cameras won't focus or won't do AFC at the highest frame rate, so just be wary of that. But, so set it to the highest frame rate that you can go to without compromising any of your other settings, especially including autofocus. Consider this sequence that I've taken here, this was of my son. It's a very short video sequence. I had a GoPro sat on top of my camera. So that's where that video is. And then the number of shots or usable shots that I felt were usable through this really short sequence is about 10 or 12. So it's something you should really consider. High frame rate. The shutter, mechanical or digital, really doesn't make much difference. I tend to leave it on the digital shutter because it preserves the life of the mechanical shutter and 
also it's just less noisy under the water and is less of a distraction to your subject. Back screen. If you're using mirrorless, you will probably want to use the back screen to compose and take your photos. So I set my back screen to on all the time, not switching between viewfinder and back screen, just purely on back screen. And that way I can hold my camera out in front of me and I can see what's going on around me and I don't have to worry about my peripheral vision by having the, the viewfinder up to my face. The other thing I do with the back screen is that I increase the brightness and so I increase the brightness to the maximum. The reason I do this is because normally I'm swimming during the middle of the day, well not in the middle of the day, but during the day, and the uh, screen is much easier to see when you increase the brightness, obviously, and also when you're swimming under the water, going down a bit deeper, you it's, it's easy to see that screen. So I manually increase the screen brightness as well. So that's it. I have all of these settings set up as a custom setting on my camera. So I have to think about it even less when I'm on the beach and I can just get on with the task of photographing. Hopefully some of these tips might help, might give you a good starting point for your photography under the water. If that's something that's useful to you and you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate a like. Subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be doing some more videos like this with some really useful, helpful tips. So thanks for watching and bye for now.